Uh, and just like on both sides of the market, on, on the commercial and the residential side, I know you're mostly dealing with commercial, but uh, what what do you make of the market right now? Residential, obviously, everyone knows the story there. It's on mm -hmm. Fuego. Um, commer but w I mean, where is commercial at right now as it, as it compares to residential? And what do you make of that? Yeah, so it, it is interesting. Going back to that, you know, the low rate environment, tons of capital, a lot, tons of institutional capital too. I, we're seeing it on the residential side, right? I think res to your point, it's really on fire. It's probably more on fire in a un maybe an unhealthy or like uh, <laughs> speculative way than it is commercial because we have so many institutional buyers. We talked about the eye buying briefly in your thing. Uh, when you open it, it's like, you know, we have algo buying of single family homes, which are pushing out the actual new buyers of these homes in a way. And people are chasing the, the returns in the single family homes have been sort of, you know, eye, eye opening commercial real estate has been very aggressive. Don't get me wrong. It's still a competitive market there, but there's still fundamentals. You still have, you know, good, so, solid qual, uh, you know, credits uh, from the tenants. You have, you know, contractual rents that you can see. So it's a little bit of a different beast, but it's certainly gotten pricier there too. I wouldn't yeah. feel that uh, real estate, commercial real estate's out of hand. Uh, but the market overall, real estate overall, is definitely benefited from a lot of cheap capital. I was, I mean, since you mentioned it, uh, I, I guess I, I'll give some background. If you don't know what iBuying is, short for instant buying, it's this this business model that platforms like Zillow, Open Door um, have adopted, where they're basically, if you want to sell your home at a snap of a finger, you can sell it to them, and their proprietary models and algorithms will be able to buy it from you at uh and uh, at one price and sell it for a profit later uh a bit of a mm, i'm not i'm not, not quite sure how to i guess the model hit a bit of a hiccup zillow it was not quite working for them uh they, they lost a lot of money they've exited the business open door and it is seems to be working for them uh aaron do you have thoughts on on that model you you mentioned institutional capital i think i buying sort of falls into that umbrella where it's like anybody that's not a, an individual home buyer right. competing for homes. Um, do you have thoughts on, on just what happened there? Yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting thing to think about. So you got to go back to the, uh, the global financial crisis and the, and the debacle of Lehman and Bear Stearns to really yeah. see the genesis of this movement, right? Because there was a ton of single family homes in foreclosure. Uh, and what happened was, you know, Blackstone was one of the first, which eventually became invitation homes. So there's a lot of, you know, American Homes for Rent did this. Sure. A lot of them started buying up tons of portfolios pennies on a dollar. And the question was, are these, are these an asset class or a trade? Because people thought they'd just recover and sell them, but they didn't, they kept buying. And then that established it as an asset class, more institutional capital came in. And then these platforms, Open Door, uh, Zillow, anyone who had a natural platform to see firsthand where those properties existed, started attracting hedge fund capital or other types of capital. Said, look, I'll give you money. You buy me assets. And they started buying them and they've been buying them a lot faster than, you know, you know, uh, John Doe, John and Jane Doe can do, right? Because they got to go get a letter of credit from their bank and they got to go tour the properties. These guys are just like, boom, we'll buy it. Boom, we'll buy it. And what happened, if you think about Zillow's model, they were using their algos, which we all see the Z estimate, right? And we've, I've had homes and I'm like, no, nah, that I love doesn't work. Estimate, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. It looks good some days, but you're like, nah, that's not real. But what happened was it became real, right? Because they started buying properties really quickly. So think about all, they've just acknowledged that they have to take these large write downs because they overpaid for these properties in Phoenix market in Dallas, Fort Worth, all these markets. So that meant all those times those were home buyers out buying, they were getting outbid and that was raising the prices. So then the next time someone lists their property, oh, what does a realtor do? They go look at the sales comps and the sales comps say, well, look, everyone's up 10%. So the buying that is caused, even if it was an inaccurate buying has led to this bubble of real estate prices in some markets.